so we are talking about the difference between the proc and the sys okay and the proc means the processes okay the literal meaning of this proc is processes so this directory or this file system slash proc it's used to hold all the processes which is running on the system and sys is for system that is we are going to see it later how this is related to the systems so we Okay. So if we go to this proc, and we have seen that all the process which is running on the system, and like I mentioned, we have spoke about this yesterday, like system D is the first process. You can even check for any other process, for example, this one. So you see that this K audit D which is running. And if you go inside any of this directory and look for any of these files, for example, FD is for file descriptor, we looked at one of the files, for example, this maps. Nothing in the map. That is strange. But if you go inside FD, hopefully we have permission. We can know. Nothing. OK. So let's look at some other process, which will give this information. So this is giving us the mapping between the virtual memory. This is the virtual memory. We will talk about that later, like what exactly the virtual memory is. And basically, it is a way how a process uh, addresses the memory. So for example, if, uh, if a process need to allocate a memory, or it need to address the memory, not the allocate, then it will always refer to the virtual memory. And we have looked at this in the yesterday section that this is what column which we have seen and rest is for rest in memory which is the actual memory your ram so we can talk about this later but the gist of it is that proc is the directory where it hold all the process information okay now let's go to the sys second this is sys Go inside the sys directory and see this. So here you see all the system related information. Okay. And system can be your devices which is connected to your system, all the device driver, which we have spoke about it yesterday. That device driver is something like if kernel need to talk to some hardware, it will talk to the uh, using the drivers or which we call it as a module in case of Linux. Okay, so this directory hold all the uh, your hardware device information in the high level. Okay, now this is like a one really popular question which is asked during the interview. So let me start. Let me put a two question for you guys. First question is this talk or this sys file system? They are called virtual file system. And second question is, if you look at the, any of the file, for example, let me look at the file inside or the directory inside the sys, you see they are all zero bytes, right? Similarly, if we can look inside that proc meminfo or any of the file proc CPU info, all these files, they are zero byte in size, right? You see this column zero. Why? So I will again pause here for a second. My question, the two question I have for you guys. First, why this is called VFS or virtual file system? The second question is why the file inside this directory, any like most of the file inside the directory, why they are zero byte in size? So let me start with a common file systems. Like let's take the example of this df and th command and you see that we have the root file system and inside the root we have a different different file system okay so these file system exist on disk so if i go to slash and if i do we will see all these file system but on the other hand this proc or this sys they are the virtual file system they do not exist on disk they are created by the kernel and they exist in memory okay 
So let me give you some more example. So kernel create this file system. They exist in memory. And the reason for that, because they act as an interface for the kernel. So if you want to modify few of the kernel parameters, and we will see some of these parameters, you can do it with the help of this sys or proc interface. So these does not actually exist on the disk. They exist on the memory. And that's why they call a virtual file system. Please remember that uh, this question has been asked like at least two times for me. I mean, when I was giving the interview in the past, someone asked me this question. Why is this called a virtual file system? Because they did not exist in memory. They exist at the, uh, they did not exist in the disk. They exist in the memory. And it acts as an interface for the kernel. The second question is like, why the size of the file inside this directory is zero byte? So yeah, Sha Shahul was correct. The reason for that, because I can give you the simple example. Let's say I am checking this three hyphen M output, right? And it is telling me that at this particular moment of time, and yesterday we have spoke about it, that the available memory which is present in my system is like the 6 GB or 7 GB, close to 7 GB. Okay. But one thing which you guys will agree, or you need to agree with me, that let's say the next second, there's some process which is triggered up and it started occupying the memory. So I am saying, Let's say I have this 8 GB of memory and 7 GB is memory is currently is in available state. But suddenly you start some process and that process, for example, start occupying 1 GB of memory. So at that moment of time, you have only have 6 GB of memory left in the system. So memory, your CPU utilization, all these things, they are the real time, right? They can change every second. So what kernel is doing, kernel is constantly keeping a track of all these things. So what you are seeing in the proc mem info is the real time view of the kernel data. So all these commands, for example, this free command, right? Or the way you are using cat to see the content of this proc mem info. These are just an interface. I mean, it's an interface for us, uh, for, uh, for the end user. And under the hood, kernel is doing all the things. So when you are executing the command, for example, the free or the cat command, at that moment of time, it is actually a call to a kernel. And kernel is invoking, invocating, a, invo invoking a function. And it at that moment of time, whatever be the status, it is presenting, presenting it to you. So most of the time, it is zero byte. But at the time when the kernel is calling it and it is trying to get the information from different, different directories. So one of the directories we have seen is, for example, this proc. And inside every process, we have this maps, right? The map is where you will see the actual memory utilization of that particular process. So just to have a final word about it is like, so everything, if you will see in this, is a kind seems like a regular text file. But every write which is perform, which is having on that file, or every write operation which is performing on a file, is just a call to a kernel function. And when you are reading this file, for for example, using this free command or this cat command, it is the snapshot of that file or the snapshot of the kernel state at that particular moment of time. So writing to that file is a call to a kernel and reading to a file is a snapshot at that particular moment of time. Okay. Any question related to that? I know it's a, it's a complicated concept, but I tried my best to explain to you guys into a simple language. I have one more question regarding this topic. Uh, we understand all these things like, okay, these are zero byte in size. Uh, they exist in kernel memory, okay, uh, wh uh, but why we have these two? Can't we have just one, like either can we have the proc, or either can we have the sys, uh, and kernel will use this as an interface, and we can use it to like, uh, to modify the kernel parameters. So 
Okay, just in the interest of our time, let guys. So, like the first thing which I have mentioned to you guys, proc is for processes, and sys is for system. So that is the main underlying thing. But uh, let me tell you one more thing. So not here. So sys was introduced starting from kernel two point six. Okay, and the reason behind it, I mean, this is not technical, but I just want to tell you guys. So, okay, again, proc is for processes. Remember this thing, okay? And okay, you, some of you guys might be aware of this file called proc slash devices or proc slash disk. So, what started happening that the kernel developer they even started putting this disk-related information or device-related information into a device, into slash proc, sorry. And that's why this file system get cluttered up. So this was designed specifically for holding the process-related information, all this whatever you have seen. But when the people, they start putting the system-related information or the device-related information, inside this file system some of the kernel developers they was not happy so then they have decided that okay we need to have a separate file system where we can hold all the system related information and that's for, that is how this sys was designed so it's only starting from kernel 2.6 you will start seeing uh sys file system i mean if you look at 2.4 that is like red hat version 3 that was pretty old so you guys might not even see it but sys, that is the main idea of the sys, just to keep the device-related information separate. And some of you might play it with uh, this thing. So if you want to change, like for example, some of the parameters, uh, you can do it inside the sys. So one of the parameters, I know this popular one, devices, system, CPU, CPU zero, or CPU zero or one. So here you will see one, right? And if I do LS CPU, this system has two CPU, right? So in case if I want to switch off one CPU just for the sake of testing, or I I want to see like how my system will behave if one of the CPU will turn off, I can do it over here. Okay, so. I have not played with this uh, much because this is really complicated. But some of the device letters things, for example, uh, one other thing is like uh, setting up your scheduler. You can do it with the help of sys. So any system related thing, you can do it inside the sys directory. The other thing for proc, for proc, the most important thing is the proxys, where you can change the system related information. So if you go to VM, which is stand for virtual memory, and you see a bunch of these parameters. So if you do this CTL hyphen A and F for dirty, F hyphen I, all these dirty parameters. So yesterday we have spoke about it, like whenever the kernel, it need to read a file from a disk, it first put it into a memory. And let's say you are opening that file into a memory and you are writing some data. So that data need to be flushed back to the disk. So all these parameters, they will guide kernel, like when exactly you need to push that data back to the disk. Okay, so that you will find inside this process VM. Other directory is .NET, where you can tune out the network related information. So for example, IPv4, and let's look at this TCP WPAM. So basically, I want to uh, uh, tune some of this write memory buffer. Like when the uh, packet reached to my uh, kernel network buffer, I want to tune these parameters. So that you can do inside this directory, proxys net. These are some of the example, but I know we have already used like 22 minutes. So I want to cover this up. So. Just the last minute thing, the proc is for processes 
and sys is for the system or the device related information this is basically an interface to the kernel and if you want to modify some of the parameters we have seen we can do it with the help of this file system and the reason they are called a virtual file system because they do not exist in the disk they exist in the memory and the reason the size of this file system is zero byte is because this is the kernel uh, snapshot at that particular moment of time kernel at that moment of time will decide okay uh, you need to uh, have this much amount of memory into the ram and just remember this point whenever you are writing to this file or the application is writing to the file it's just a call to a kernel function and when you are reading a file it is a snapshot at that particular state okay let me repeat it again try to explain it to, into the other terms like the way i have mentioned uh, your system might have 8 gb of or 7 gb of free memory available but in the next one second it might some process got kicked off and it will start occupying the 2 gb of memory so the state of the kernel or the state of your memory utilization keep on changing so that's why you are seeing this file at zero byte because it only got updated by the kernel when you got a so okay let me try to explain this in the much simpler term so this is kernel and let's say you execute a command like free hyphen m right so when you execute this command kernel will start looking inside this proc directory to see how much memory each and every system is calculating so it will go like slash proc one slash proc two all this and it will look inside in this case it's called uh, maps file there's one more file called smaps it will start looking inside all these files do all these calculation and present a human or for us or for this free hyphen m command an output which 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 we can understand okay so at that moment of time when it is doing all this calculation and doing the present it presenting it to us it is writable but rest of the time it is just you will see as a virtual file system.